Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this a brand new day. No hamster to play with and show off. I'm very sorry. It's 7.32, been on the late side, so I'm most likely going to have to call my therapist and cancel today's therapy appointment. Yay. I late start and joy. But even though my hamsters are sleeping, they're all really wonderful, but... Being high strung can take a toll on your life. Last night I picked up little Figma and I was holding him in my hand. Now, I got Dr. Snurf and Saber before I got Figma and then I got little Gojira after that. So, Figma should be younger and have more life ahead of him. But he's incredibly high strung. <clears throat> when I picked him up last night, well, as a quick aside and insert, the way you can really tell how your hamsters are doing age-wise and all such is how thick they are. If they are young and healthy, you cannot feel their vertebrae. You can feel a line along their back of muscle covering their vertebrae, but you cannot feel their individual vertebrae. You can feel their spine, but that's it. Their hips are, you know, meaty, their knees have meat on them, and they're, they're, they're solid. But as you get older and your cells slowly stop dividing, you get thinner. Your cells aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And so, in a hamster's case, just like a person's case, they get thinner. You can feel their individual vertebrae on their back. You can feel their hip bones. You can feel their knees. They get bony. Well, last night when I was picking up little Figmo, I could feel the vertebrae on his back and he doesn't feel as fat as he used to. So being high strung affects your health, which affects your longevity. So I don't even know if he's gonna live as long as Dr. Snurf. I'm feeding him extra. I'm making sure he's got everything down in there. I want him to be as happy and healthy as possible, but if it's just old age, brought on by being high strung, not a lot you can do. I got really, my lower fingers down here are really twitchy today, which is good because these are my non-twitchy fingers. Yeah, I Again, I don't know how your nerves work. I got a couple things to talk about here. <laughs> <coughs> now I'm remembering. One thing I wanted to talk about, the other day, I had noticed that there were some large orb weaver spiders that were like on their orbs outside of my window. Because you look out the window and there's the forest and you'll also look out the window and there's an eave down below that is big enough for a cat to get on. And then there's an eave up above, which is the roof. And between that spot, because spiders have good vision, there's an area that they drop down and then they make a big orb. You look outside and orbs and there is this big orb weaver out there this morning just big that was working so there's a lot of big orb weavers out there and oh boy yesterday there was it was baby spider galore in here i mean i was constantly plucking little baby spiders and then again i didn't pick them up you know and then they're running on my hands i mean i am arachnophobic mildly anymore but i would grab their webs and then they're dangling and then i'd put the web down on something in the, one of the hamster cages but it was constant just constant i've probably got one over there right now but at one point i mean there were like three or four of them on my monitor and I was just going, oh my gosh. And then I turn on my fan at another point and more of them were going like, whoo, because they lost their grip and then they were dangling on the ends of their webs in the air. And I was like, oh. and I'm moving them everywhere. It was just crazy. So, and then there was an, another one that wasn't a baby. It was about this big with all of its legs. And it was this kind of mix of yellow green body and you know it was just it was just a spider and of all the spiders out there in the world only 12 of them 12 of them like species like to attack people so it's not like it's trying to hurt me and it was small enough that i just got rid of it put it off to the side too so thank goodness for that 
but it's again there's massive amounts of baby spiders around still so thumbs up for that again i don't mind if they're they live here too so in fact there's comes down a spider on my my monitor here a little tiny thing you can see it there a little bit so down into the thunderdome you go <laughs> you can fight it out with gojira thumbs up for that and so there we go it's spider central also the thing though that i had talked about the other day <clears throat> i mean i mentioned this one a lot especially recently <coughs> for anybody that's new here here's the full story like three years ago i severed my radial nerve on my arm just completely it was severed and the radial nerve controls your hand Mainly, I mean, it controls your hand, but it's what, at least what I severed, is the main controller for these fingers. And all the other muscles, and then these fingers, but it's like these ones right here are the major thing that got severed. Everything else, yeah, and but it's they aren't as vital as these ones but it just went thunk i woke up one morning and my hand didn't work i mean literally i could because you have nerve fibers with nerve bundles and of your nerve there's more of those spiders good god that's mine because of the various <clears throat> way nerves work it's like each nerve bundle is made up of like a hundred nerve fibers and each nerve fiber is made up of a whole bunch of individual threads well as you need each individual thread needs x number of threads inside of them to work or the signals don't happen and then the fibers if they get shattered so much then eventually it falls down far enough that the bundle doesn't work I severed enough that there was just enough nerve endings to go like this. I could bring my fingers in, and I could bring my thumb in, just that much. And it was muscle tension and gravity to bring it back out. It was just dead. Again, I wish I could say I, it was something exciting that had happened, like I was saving orphans in a burning building in a war zone, or I was saving someone's life in a knife fight in Borneo, something like that. No, no, it was nothing exciting. It was stupid and it was all my fault. I used to fall asleep all the time, all the time, because I only slept maximum an hour a night. And then after my wife died, I started trying to sleep more, but I couldn't because my sleep mask was unusable, and so I was not doing well, falling asleep all the time. Because of the chairs that I sat in and the way that things worked, I would fall off to my right. And if you fall to your right and you lean up against the arm of a chair, the pressure on that is like taking your nerve in my case the radial nerve and rubbing it across the sharp edge of a rock and the fibers are going snippity snap snippity snap snippity 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 snoring and then one day you've got two pieces of nerve with just a few tiny fibers running between them and that's exactly what happened falling asleep and leaning up against the arms of chairs severed my radial nerve and paralyzed my hand what a dumb way, dumb way to become paralyzed. Now, the only thing that worked and worked, the only thing that made my life even halfway okay during the time, the year and a half to two years that this thing did not work. I was under constant anxiety, constant anxiety because it, it didn't work. And it was my dominant hand. I am while I, if you are like plus one, you're right-handed, minus one, you're left-handed, zero, you're ambidextrous, I'm at like just a tick onto the right-handed side. <clears throat> I cannot sign my name or write quickly with my left. And so when this hand died, my left hand became my dominant hand. I didn't even think about trying to use this thing. It just didn't, it didn't happen. My body went, okay, this is the dominant hand. 
is this thing, and it was the only thing that was keeping me going, was the fact that after going to the VA and they did the test where they put a, a probe here, you know, and a probe here, and then they run electricity along the nerve. And if electricity gets through, your nerve's okay. And if it doesn't, it's not. There was nothing getting through. No signals. It was severed. But, except for spinal nerves, nerves regrow at about a millimeter a month. So even though it was severed, they said, if your hand still does not work even in seven years, don't worry, nerves regrow. Now I fully credit my not my being stubborn and refusing because they wanted me to put this in a brace and just not use it. Just put it in a brace and deal with life and then have the hand in a brace. I said, no. And so I was constantly stretching, constantly stretching, constantly trying to use this thing. And of course, flooding myself with cannabis. I am a medicinal cannabis user to the max. I smoke, vape, and eat constantly. I am flooding my system with THC all the time. I fully believe that the cannabis use and just being stubborn as all hell is what, after two years, it started to come back. And even though this arm still does not feel right, it does not feel right. And quite frequently, my hand up here just, it feels wrong. It's just not right. It is not right in here. It is not right in here. Something is just wrong. That's just the way it feels. I mean, it's fine. It's just nerve tissue and scar tissue on the nerves. But for years, this was in a constant state of cramping. So if I even bonked it accidentally, oh my God, it hurt up to my shoulders. My entire arm was in agony. So be careful of your nerves, please. Always make sure to move. This one as well, don't get blood clots. Don't just sit in one place. You, constriction of your blood vessels causes turbulence, Turbulence can cause blood clots. Blood clots, of course, will kill you. Quickly. I am I was rather amazed. I did not know how quickly you would be knocked unconscious and how quickly fatal it becomes if you get a blood clot in your lungs. I'd always wondered until I saw this video, and I've talked about it before, and I'm just going to mention again. If you get a blood clot in your lungs, you are going to go down like that. Because when you have a stoppage, when you have a blood flow clot in your heart, it, uh, in your lung, it immediately backs up into your heart and it starts the circulation issues right then and there. You will stand up, you'll have a clot in your lung, and then you will just go thump and you're down. And they need to get you help fast or you're going to die. So it's amazing how quick uh, a pulmonary, 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 yeah, pulmonary cardio, your pulmonary embolisms will kill you. But then that's good. I mean, if I'm going to die, I want it to be fast. I don't want it to linger and hurt. That's one of the things that I don't like about the idea of like a heart attack, because you can, you, you can be in agony for hours before, you know, you die. Ugh. So, joy. And at 56, of course, I need to make sure that I'm going to live as long as possible. It's stated I used to be a nurse's aide for 15 years, and I took care of a lot of men in their 50s and early 60s that were dying of old age. So, I want to live to be as old as my stepfather. Now he's had issues, he's had strokes, he's on blood thinner, he's had heart surgery, he fought in World War II, he's like almost 90 now, if not 90. And up until, I mean, my mother had to help take care of him because of his issues and such. So once she died last, well, it's been over a year now, uh, the April before, he had to go to an adult family home. So he's got three daughters, at least two of which live in the area up there. So, and one of them, her husband died of a heart attack. So 
I felt horrible for her because, hey, I've gone through losing a spouse. It sucks. But <coughs> life goes on. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. And I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them afterward. But for right now, just thanking you for having left me a comment. Thank you very, very much. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. American English speaker. And it's arranged because even though I count American Sign Language with my fibro depression and more, I'm amazed that I can remember that my name is not Reginald P. Farquhar. And what does the P stand for? Well, Sylvester. The P is silent. Now, let's open up that chrome. We have an itchy nose. We have Daniel P. Thank you so very, very much. And Ice Damon, greatly appreciated. Black Torch, thumbs up. Ryan Davies, thumbs up and thank you. Urbitavar1, thumbs up and thank you. And yes, Recovering Alcoholic, always a good thing. Amanda Byers, greatly appreciated. Aaron Kilborn. <laughs> and Kathy Kiscat, greatly appreciated. Hyperlord XP, I like the name, very cool. Anonymous, Anomalous Cal, greatly appreciated. Sebastian Ferris, thumbs up and thank you. Charlie Williams, greatly appreciated. Adrian Bryan, thumbs up and thank you. Kieran Slipknot Fan, thank you very much. And Spec, thumbs up and thank you. Kit Kat, like a Kit Kat bar and Overlord 9K, greatly appreciated. And then we have Cup Noodle Gaming, <laughs> heck of a name. Mr. Dugda, greatly appreciated. And then we have Dora FTL Kids Bop Rules, A U T T P, yes, indeed, who just recently went over 1,000 subscribers on his channel. Thumbs up, very cool. Russian Timing, greatly appreciated. Natty, thumbs up and thank you. Type with a capital E at the end. Greg Farnham, Greatly appreciated. And last but not least, Vade R Gaming. Greatly appreciated, each and every one of you. I still have people saying you need to go back and do recover, recover, and do reaction videos because they were so so good and so interesting. And well, if I could, I mean, I might. Unfortunately, because of my depression, death of my wife, my emotional systems coming back online after being depressed most of my life, I'm having to deal with 35 plus years of emotional issues now. There are people that can't handle 35 years of emotional issues after 35 years. I've got 35 years of issues I'm dealing with right now. So I don't know if I can ever go back and do reactions. I am overloaded my systems. I mean, it's, I let down my armor to react. Everything's gonna come out this way. Nothing's gonna be able to come in. And then secondly, of course, copyrighted materials. I don't get paid for making reaction videos because it's copyrighted material. The copyrighted people get the money. I don't, and because of that, I can't afford to do videos I don't get paid for. I'm trying desperately not to become homeless, and I'm sinking slowly. I mean, the water is right here, and it used to be here, so this is not good. I can't afford to spend time making videos that I don't get paid for. Maybe I don't get paid much for these, maybe 10 or 20 cents, but that's better than nothing. So even though I can't, I don't think I ever can until I can actually get money somehow and not have to worry about losing my home and living on the street. So I'm very sorry. But if you could check out my various links down below, Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, NearlySeniorCitizen.com, if you donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. And if you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. A definite thumbs up. If you could subscribe to the channel, that would be very cool. Greatly appreciated. I would understand if you did not wish to, but if you are down with it, I will do my very best keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. Very good thing. I got to call my therapist, I think, because I've been so far behind, I'm not sure I'm going to be prepared to have therapy at nine o'clock. So join on that. So now yeah, I got this video, got another video I'm working on, another video I got to record. So that's a good thing. I got plenty of stuff coming up today. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend. And that is a very good thing. Isn't it? I think it is. I'm pretty sure. 
I think I've got everything done. So I've got like five seconds to go. So really take care and have the best day that you can have.